The movie opens with a narrative discussing the potential existence of life on other planets despite various efforts to find extraterrestrial beings. Conclusive evidence has not been found. As a result, any discoveries in this field can be a big milestone in human history, unless you sing for a punk band, in which case no one will believe you. In the next scene, a spacecraft called Magellan is seen orbiting Earth. Inside it, Commander Roger Nelson communicates with NASA Mission Control, reporting interference in the onboard monitors. The officer on the other end reassures him, explaining that they're in the process of downloading an AI plugin. As they converse, Nelson says he'll wake up on Titan, Saturn's largest moon, a year and a half from the current moment. With control systems all ready, the control center reminds Nelson that the gravitational push will begin in two minutes and asks if he is ready for stasis. However, the commander is busy admiring the mesmerizing view of space through the porthole. It's just so goddamn beautiful. He eventually lies down on a pod to go into hibernation for 18 months. The scene then shifts to two and a half years earlier, where Nelson and his wife Abigail are having some fun time with friends. Amidst this, Nelson receives a call from a NASA officer, informing him of a space mission briefing tomorrow. This news doubles the couple's happiness, as Nelson is finally going to fulfill his dream of going into space. The next day, at the briefing, NASA project manager Gerald Becker tells Nelson that they detected a radio anomaly, a low-frequency pulse with regular repetition. After the first anomalous signal, they detected two more of it with higher frequencies. Gerald notes that these sound messages create a perfect major tonal triad and concludes that the signal is artificial. This revelation leaves Nelson in shock because he can't believe that something from the other side of the galaxy is sending a song to the Earth. When he inquires about the origin of these mysterious signals, Gerald reveals that all signals emanate from within the solar system. The first from Titan, the second from Neptune's moon called Triton, and the third from a dwarf planet. Eris. To gather more information, NASA plans to send Nelson into space. The U.S. Secretary of Defense Craig Stewart provides further details, explaining that Nelson's mission involves visiting these locations, finding signal sources, and collecting samples. Sounds about as boring as Starfield. According to Gerald, the ideal window for the launch of the spaceship will be only after eight years, but there's also a less favorable one, which can be launched in two and a half. To prevent China from taking the lead, they must go with the less ideal window. The most difficult part of this mission is that Nelson has to spend 10 years in space, away from friends and family. Despite this, Nelson makes a brave decision and volunteers to go. Later, he shares the details of his mission with his wife. Abigail is clearly upset because she has to stay away from him for such a long period. Initially, she is reluctant to let him go, but Nelson somehow manages to persuade her. Better space than jail, honey. No, it's not. Yeah, you're right. The scene then shifts to the 542nd day of the mission, which is when Nelson wakes up from stasis. He is greeted by his AI assistant, Ferdinand, who helps him in monitoring the spaceship systems. This AI voice provides a detailed report on the events that transpired while Nelson was asleep. Mystery recapped here. You've been asleep. It also reveals that they are going to enter Saturn's orbit within the next 24 hours. Following this, Nelson starts checking the emails he received from NASA Control Center. Among numerous emails, he finds video footage of his wife, who greets him and asks him to play chess with her. After responding with his move, Nelson continues reviewing the emails. From one of them, he learns that China has postponed their launch by a year, opting to head directly to Triton. A while later, Nelson receives an another video message from Gerald, congratulating him on his progress in space. Gerald also tells him that he offered Abigail to congratulate him in person, but she's undergoing a difficult time due to a nervous breakdown. Despite feeling saddened by this news, Nelson continues his duties. As Magellan enters Saturn's orbit, Nelson learns that the mysterious signal originates near one of Titan's methane lakes. With this information in hand, he boards a landing module and separates from the main ship to approach Titan's surface. Accompanied by another AI voice named Neil. He lands on a glacier and then deploys a hose into the lake to collect samples. After this, he carries the necessary equipment and ventures to locate the source of the signal. Upon reaching a bit further, Neil relays Ferdinand's message to the commander, warning of an approaching storm from the east and the potential danger of methane fumes exploding. However, Nelson, being much closer to the source, decides to retrieve the transmitter 
before heading back. My wife used to Dutch oven me on the regular. I can handle a little methane. Soon after, he discovers that the signal source is coming from the methane lake. Despite being aware of the risks, Nelson proceeds into the lake and locates the transmitter resembling a glass ball. He retrieves it and hurries back to the lander just before the storm hits him. While waiting for the storm to pass, Nelson examines the alien transmitter. Driven by curiosity, he removes his gloves and proceeds to touch it with his finger, disregarding Neil's warning. As soon as he makes contact, his communication with Neil is abruptly cut off, and he experiences the sensation of being drawn into a black hole. Fortunately, when he panics and drops the transmitter, he regains normalcy. As the storm clears, Nelson makes his way back to the mothership. Once inside Magellan, he sets his trajectory to Neptune, heading for another journey. He then immediately contacts NASA Control Center and reports about his discovery. Shortly after, Gerald responds, commending Nelson for his outstanding work. He also emphasizes the importance of adhering to protocol and avoiding any tampering with the object. Hearing this, the commander sends another message, admitting that he has already touched the transmitter with his bare hands and details its peculiar reaction. He requests permission to repeat the action and record the phenomena on camera. While awaiting Gerald's response, Nelson examines the methane liquid from the lake and is astonished to find amino acids, which indicates that life is possible on the planet. Just then, he receives a video message from Abigail, who informs him about a big problem that has arisen. She claims that some Chinese hacker hacked into her computer system and tried to access information about their current mission. In order to ensure safety, Craig has threatened to completely ban her from the NASA Control Center. As a result of this, Abigail is disheartened as she fears losing the only way to communicate with her husband. Although it's only been a year and a half, she already feels that she's sending messages to a dead man. In response, Nelson sends her another video message, urging her to stay strong and wait for him. He also tells his next chess move, waxes poetic about all of those happy Dutch oven memories, and then goes for stasis. The scene then fast forwards to 32 months later, when Nelson once again wakes up. As before, Ferdinand greets him and starts reporting everything that happened in his absence. You've been sleeping again. Watch out and take care. According to the AI, an anomaly was detected in the alien transmitter, coinciding with increased brain activity in Nelson, a phenomenon deemed impossible during stasis. While reviewing emails, Nelson comes across Gerald's video message, in which he discloses that the alien transmitter is still emitting signals, resembling a binary code, and they're trying to decipher it. Another email informs Nelson of an interference in Ferdinand's system, probably due to a hacking attempt. Later, he again decides to make contact with the alien transmitter, this time asking Ferdinand to film it. Upon touching it, the glass ball illuminates, and inexplicable images flash before his eyes, making him feel uneasy. Ferdinand then transmits the recorded video to the control center. In the meantime, Magellan enters Triton's orbit. As Nelson reads the landing module, he receives another message from Gerald, revealing about a mishap in the Chinese space mission that has resulted in the demise of all three astronauts. This makes the commander feel nervous but he continues with his mission. The stakes are higher this time, as he must find the second transmitter in a limited time, or else he'll miss the window to Ares. The next scene shows Nelson having landed on Triton and searching for the signal source in a crater. He cautiously heads down and manages to locate the source within a few minutes. Turns out that the transmitter looks exactly the same as the previous one. With only nine minutes before takeoff, he stores the transmitter into a container and starts heading back to the land but in an unfortunate turn, he accidentally drops the container while ascending. This prompts Nelson to go back to retrieve it, despite having only four minutes until departure. He manages to reach the lander mere seconds before the time limit. He then instructs Neil to initiate the engine and return to the mothership. Without any delay, he sets another trajectory to Eris. Afterwards, Nelson sends a video message to the control center, updating them on the second transmitter. Following this, he begins to examine the ice he collected from Triton. In the midst of this, a video message from Abigail arrives, expressing her deep longing as it's now been four years. She further expresses her fear of losing him, especially after learning about the tragic Chinese incident. This obviously saddens Nelson, but he somehow manages to distract himself. Continuing his analysis of the ice, he discovers several impurities, unlike those found in seawater. Later on, he receives a message from Craig, who tells him about how delicate the mission has become to ensure safety 
safety, Nelson will be contacting only him, whereas Abigail and other civilians aren't permitted access to the control center henceforth. Craig also orders Nelson to steer clear of the mysterious transmitters due to their unknown nature and potential danger. But despite the stern warning, Nelson decides to touch both transmitters simultaneously. As a consequence, he undergoes another episode of inexplicable visions. This is how I feel when I try to spend time on TikTok. The scene then cuts to the 2079th day of the mission, and we see Magellan land successfully on Eris. There, Nelson finds the third transmitter, but this time, it's covered with mucus. Upon retrieving the transmitter and some samples, he heads back to the lander. During the docking process with the mothership, Nelson faces a problem. The AI begins communicating in Chinese. Sensing a looming threat, he promptly orders Ferdinand to wipe all of its memory and review the security system. Thankfully, the situation is brought under control, enabling the module to dock successfully. As soon as he enters Magellan, Nelson instructs both Ferdinand and Neil not to authorize any system alterations without his express permission. Following this, he begins examining the sample from Eris. With Ferdinand's assistance, he discovers DNA particles in it, leaving him shocked for a moment. He records an excited video message, unveiling this most exciting discovery to the NASA Control Center. In addition, he informs Craig about the issues in Ferdinand's system and asks him to check the firewall. Until then, he decides to take full control of the spaceship. Four hours pass by, but Nelson receives no response from the Control Center. While waiting, he places the three spherical transmitters side by side and begins touching all of them, just fondling them in random orders and gasping with glee. At one point, he puts all three of them together Together, leading to visions with greater detail than before. Soon after, these visions are abruptly interrupted by deafening sound signals. Ferdinand reports a massive stream of radio signals, several million messages passing through the spaceship's communication system. Nelson, once again combining the transmitters, instructs the AI to analyze the signals. The analysis reveals an endless stream of radio transmissions originating from different points in the galaxy. The signals are transmitted at the same time, but it remains uncertain whether this occurs in real time or whether it originates from a certain point in the distant past. Nelson tries to comprehend the perplexing information. He believes that these signals were transmitted by creatures similar to humans. He then theorizes that these aliens use quantum entanglement to transmit signals into radio waves. Eager to unravel more about these signals, he directs Ferdinand to analyze a thousand of them in detail. On doing so, the AI finds out that the binary data within the signals is encoded in the DNA code. Just then, Ferdinand detects another signal emanating from the Oort cloud, situated far beyond the explored reaches of the solar system. It would take 38 years to reach the signal's source if Magellan continues to operate. It's at this point when Nelson realizes that he can't back off after coming this far. After this, he records a final message to his wife, revealing his decision to fly to the Oort cloud. He apologizes to her for the difficult years of waiting, but he claims that the signals are calling him and he can't ignore it. The Oort cloud is the ultimate Dutch oven. He then makes his final chess move before ending the video. Nelson then instructs Ferdinand to set the trajectory to the Oort cloud. NASA, as well as the Department of Defense, are against such a decision by the commander. Gerald attempts to persuade Nelson to come home and demands that Magellan be returned back to the center. However, our hero has already made up his mind. The movie ends as Nelson sets his course towards the new mission, labeling it as Mission Day 1. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.